Ah, oh, shucks. Hey, hey, internet. Swag here. Want to build a minigame? Then follow along for part one of two, where I show you all the circuitry to start and stop the game, and how to build your flight controls for this setup behind me. Let's get to it. Alrighty, first things first. Turning CV2 on in your room. This room. General setup. Next page. Allow creative tools beta content. If you check this mark and apply settings, it will save the room and allow you to use CV2. Next, from our backpack, we'll get our maker pen. And in our palettes, we can now see that our Circus V2 tab is active. First, I'm going to need my trusty sidekick, Nugget Magic Chicken. Next, under gadgets and gizmos, a piston V2, and attach your bird of choice to your piston. Let's make an on and off button so we can turn our game on and off with a toggle button V2. This is going to be our central control. We turn this on, the game will turn on, we turn it off, the game will turn off, and we can later on add a trigger volume to our chicken. If it hits any of the obstacles, it will turn this button off, which in turn will turn the game off. We are going to require a few piston set acceleration, piston set distance, and piston set speed chips. So get those out of your pellet, put them somewhere nice where you can copy them, because we are going to require a few of those. The first time we turn the game on, we want our V2 piston to end up in the middle of our play area. So we get a piston set distance, wire the execution to our toggle button, but wire the target to our piston that our chicken is connected to. If our play space is two meters high and we want to start in the middle, well, let's make it three meters high. We start in the middle, we configure our third pin to be 1,5. There we go. We start our piston at the bottom. If we smash button now, there we go. The next thing is acceleration. To make our flapping motion, well, we want our piston to continuously gain a negative value. That sounds counterproductive, I know, gaining something negative. We want to take away a value into the negatives. So we will have to set an acceleration to minus Minus anything, really. We can calibrate this later on. And I don't want the chicken to fall immediately, because then we press our button and we immediately need to start flapping. So we, we are going to give this a little bit of a delay. Mm, delay, there we go. So after the distance has been set, we will have a delay of two seconds. And after that delay, the piston will gain the acceleration. Also, same target, same piston. There we go. There's going to be a lot of yellow lines coming from that piston once we're done. Do not worry, it's meant to look like that. Now, when we press our button again, start and then after two seconds we'll start falling next thing is getting ourselves a toggle button set is pressed yes quite a mouthful and we're gonna keep that value at false because this will set the button 
if it gets an execution to not be pressed, which is going to be a way of turning the game off. Now, to make sure that this works um, whenever the chicken hits something, we will get ourselves a trigger volume V2 and place that over Nugget. Go, you can make your hitbox big or tiny as you like. Maybe put in a few more trigger volumes so it looks a bit more accurate, but for now we'll go with a nice and square one. And we will see if an object enters this trigger volume, then toggle button set is pressed to false. Now to make sure this actually works, we are going to have to build a little bit of terrain. There we go. Now, if we reset it, when our chicken falls, turns the button back off. Cool. So now we have the start of our game, we have our hit detection, we can now get to the movement of our flying chicken. So this is going to be really easy, we're going to take a piston set speed chip, we are going to get ourselves a button V2. Tell it to fly, chicken fly. And then every time this button is pressed, it will set this piston's speed to a certain value. Let's see, it said it's two. Oh, whoops. Um, let's reset the whole thing first. And well, there you go. That was a lot simpler than the whole thing over there. So that is another thing we are going to need. When it ends, we want our chicken to stop moving. Because it'd be a bit weird otherwise. So, to check if our toggle button is pressed, we can use the is pressed pin. Then, we get an if chip, we wire like so, now this if chip will check if the button is pressed, we'll put it here so that our set speed, which makes the chicken flap, uh, fly, will only work if this button is pressed. There we go. So now, should not function, turn it on. And there it goes. Now another thing I would really like it to do is when it stops, it also stops moving. So we get another set acceleration. And set that acceleration to zero. Once again, wire it to the same piston that already has all of those wires coming out of it. And see, whenever this button is released, in other words, when our game ends, then we set the acceleration of our piston to zero, along with the speed of our piston. Once again, same target, and we set that two to zero. So let's make a... Um, block here that the chicken can bump into and if we press on then we can flap now if we accidentally flap into the block sticks there because it eliminates all movement all acceleration and so on and so forth sadly that is all the time we have for now Keep an eye on the channel for part 2, where we will go over different ways to set up a level and a score system.
But for now, use your newfound knowledge wisely, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!